Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we've got a chillin' scare video and this is Six most disturbing burglars caught on home security camera footage and we don't get right into it ladies and Hit the like button, hit subscribe button, comment, stick down below If you like that, we'll share out with the donations And most of my videos do not get monetized You can leave a super thanks or a link to my PayPal's in the description Let's go In 2023, news of a string of break-ins started to spread in Franklin Township on the southeast side of Indiana. According to the news reports, thousands of residents were afraid to leave their houses after hearing about a thief who had ransacked over two dozen cars and homes in less than a week. On Tuesday, July 13th of that year, a woman named Carla Wilson woke up to find that some of her jewelry was missing. Confused, she walked around her house looking for where she could have possibly left the jewelry, and that's when she noticed her front door was open. In my mind, if I know there are break-ins and my jewelry's missing, my first assumptions I've been broken into. If I know there are break-ins in the area. In a panic, she looked through a ring camera footage from the previous evening, where she was shocked to see some grown man walking around her garage in the middle of the night. In the video, a bearded man wearing a hoodie to cover his face can be seen walking around Carla Wilson's garage and grabbing a can of WD-40. Was the garage door open or am I misconstruing that? Because the garage door is open, that's just stupid. You're just, that's a fucking idiot maneuver. That's what she deserve to get bring in and do. But that's fucking stupid if that's what you're doing. As per the victim's statement, the man first broke into the victim's family car, which was parked outside a few days ago. This is where he had stolen the car's garage door opener, which is how he was able to get into the garage in the first- Okay, don't ever put your garage door opener just in your car. Don't do it. Put the garage door opener in your house. So you always have it with you. Don't ever put it- that's just easy breaking. That's just dumb. I'll bet she never did that again. First place. The man simply pressed the button to open the garage, broke into the Wilson's other car which was inside her garage, and stole money, an iPhone, and a pair of sunglasses. Though still unsatisfied with all of this, the man then sprayed the WD-40 he found in Carla's garage down the side of her door to prevent it from squeaking, then picked the lock to break into the house itself where he can then be seen on another camera. I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda smart. I'm the top of guy, I'll get the turn WD-40. To stop the squeaking, that, that actually is kind of smart. I don't know if it would really work every time, but it worked in that instant, so that's kind of smart. Upon entering the home, the man walked straight to Carla's bedroom and saw her sleeping directly in front of him. Unfazed, the man proceeded to casually stroll around the living room for about a minute as he stole multiple pieces of jewelry, including the victim's favorite diamond ring, all while she was sleeping in the next room over with the door open. Thankfully, Carla slept right through the incident, and after spending seven minutes in her house, the thief walked out the front door and never came back. For the cops, it was obvious that the man was an experienced burglar, and it's pretty creepy how well prepared he was to rob Carla's house, even taking measures to prevent the door from squeaking. This led the police to believe he alone was responsible for all the dozens of break-ins that were occurring in the area in the last week. It must have been incredibly disturbing for Carla to look at her ring camera and find this man walking around her home with ill intentions and watching her in such a vulnerable state knowing that he could have hurt her if he wanted to. Fortunately though, Carla woke up the next morning unscathed and was able to use the video to warn her neighbors. Although it's pretty common for burglars with this many successful robberies to eventually get caught during one of their dozens of attempts, this time the man was never identified. On June 18th, Usually what happens is they'll get cocky and make mistakes. It's very simple mistakes, but they get cocky and make mistakes is usually what happens. 2017, a man named Jeff D came home from work at 3.45 a.m. and found that his house had been ransacked and vandalized by an unknown intruder. 
Thinking a video might serve as evidence, Jeff immediately started documenting the damage in his home as soon as he got inside, walking his viewers through the destruction the intruder left behind. Okay folks, I came home from work today. Today is the, the morning of the 18th of June 2017. Someone broke in to the house and uh, just to started destroying things. Now, they evidently slept on the couch, got the Kool-Aid out of the refrigerator. I'm not touching anything until the police get here if I don't know if they're going to do any fingerprints or anything. I'm trying to figure out. They just started throwing things and breaking them. It doesn't look like they were stealing a lot of things. Here's firewood that they used. I mean, there are so many things here they could have stolen. And all they did was break stuff. As soon as he records the damage, it becomes pretty clear that this is no ordinary burglary. Instead of taking any valuables, the thief ate Jeff's food from the fridge, turned the place upside down, and didn't even bother to clean up the evidence of his intrusion, including a glass of Kool-Aid and a slice of pizza he left on the floor next to the couch. From multiple pieces of pottery, to stained glass windows, to a clothes iron, whoever broke into the house apparently just wanted to have some fun throwing things, breaking furniture, and generally making a mess of the house. For the next few minutes, the recording continues in pretty much the same way, with Jeff narrating the damage caused to his property. But when he goes upstairs and steps into his bedroom, he finds something extremely disturbing. Somebody sleeping in the bed in the bedroom. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Chillingly, the footage shows a random person sleeping on Jeff's bed. Shocked at the sight of the stranger, Jeff did the only reasonable thing to do at that moment and locked himself in another room while he waited for the police. After finding the stranger in the victim's bed, the cops ask the intruder if he's under the influence of drugs, and even though he denies it, it's pretty clear that he had tried to open some of Jeff's prescription medication bottles. When asked what he's doing sleeping in another man's bed, he claims he doesn't know how he ended up there. One of the things that's most surprising about the footage is that for a guy who just single-handedly destroyed an entire house, the intruder went down pretty easily, not even putting up a fight when the officer put the cuffs on. Even more disturbing is the fact that the man doesn't even seem to remember his own name, suggesting he was almost 100% under the influence of something during the break-in. Later in the investigation, the identity of the intruder was revealed as 39-year-old Stacy Foster, a Fraser's Bottom, West Virginia resident who is consequently charged with nighttime burglary and destruction of... What the heck was his goal? He had been on something because he showed up there just to destroy the place. And then sleep and fall, and then he fell asleep in the bed. What the hell was he thinking? What was his plan now? What was his plan? What was he thinking? What was the goal? property following his actions at Jeff's house. Following the charges, Stacy was placed in Western Regional Jail on $50,000 bond, but it wasn't publicly announced what the authorities decided to do with him after that, nor was it revealed how he ended up vandalizing a random home and sleeping in a stranger's bed. On Monday, July 25th, 2016, a man named Jack Makercher and his girlfriend Jordan Baranskis came back from dinner at a restaurant near their home in Chicago and fell asleep watching TV on the couch, as they often like to do. Oh, it's this. The next day, Jordan realized her purse was missing, leading to an argument in which Jack accused her of leaving it at the restaurant. To find out what really happened and put the matter to rest, the couple retraced their steps by scrolling through the previous night's surveillance videos. 
When they rewound the tape to around 3.30 a.m., they found something pretty terrifying. This is creepy as hell, bro. Like, look at this. A man who the couple didn't know stood at the top of their stairway looking down at them sleeping on the couch below. He had apparently snuck in through their unlocked front door, silently walked past them up the stairs, and proceeded to stare down at them for a total of four minutes, just hovering above them as he watched them sleep. Disturbingly, the man moved so slowly and quietly through the house that he didn't even wake up the couple's two dogs who were sleeping at Jack and Jordan's feet next to the couch. That's insane. As soon as the couple reported the incident to the cops, the sheriff mentioned he suspected the same man was probably responsible for other neighborhood burglaries that had taken place in the days leading up to the break-in of Jack and Jordan's house. In the days following the incident, some nearby residents even uploaded pictures to Facebook of the intruder casually riding through dark alleys on a bike and attempting to break into homes. And after reviewing their doorbell footage, it's clear the man was looking for an entryway into any one of the homes. It's pretty strange to see how someone who managed to sneak into a house undetected by the couple and their two dogs decided to only walk away with a purse, but thankfully the thought of harming the victims never entered his head. In an interview with WGN TV, Jordan said she liked to think the man was watching the TV and not them sleeping on the couch, but that much would be impossible to confirm. After the incident, the couple were left understandably shaken, but despite their efforts to warn their neighbors and the manhunt that followed the disturbing incident, the suspect was never found. That's insane, because some of the footage, he looks pretty clear on what he looks like, so I don't know how they haven't found him. Flushing, Queens is generally considered by its residents to be a relatively safe place to live. But in 2015, footage of an incident at a house on 33rd Avenue near Union Street went viral and put a lot of the neighborhood's residents on edge. One night in late November of that year, security cameras caught a man wearing a backpack and a black cap with the word diamond written on it casually walking up to the front door of this four bedroom house. After entering through the unlocked back door, the intruder can be seen prowling around the house on his tiptoes to avoid detection, and a few minutes later he drops to his hands and knees and crawls on the floor while holding what appears to be a knife between his teeth. Disturbingly, the homeowners were lying in the bed in that same room while the burglar crawled around and snagged his cell phone from one of the dressers. Although this was the end of the video that was released by police, the seconds that followed were even more intense, as the homeowner revealed that just moments later he was woken up by the sound of the intruder crawling on the floor. Upon seeing the homeowner jolt out of the bed, the suspect immediately got up and fled, and fortunately, nobody was injured during the incident. During the investigation, police described the suspect as 6 foot 2 and 200 pounds. I could have hell, but I might have got, I'll be chasing that dude and kicking him in the ribs if I saw him crawling like that. But despite the incriminating footage, they were never able to find him. It's pretty disturbing to imagine what he was planning on using the knife for, especially considering that along with the two adults in the same room, there were also three kids in the house at the time of the break-in. After the incident, the homeowners mentioned they learned their lesson and never left their back door unlocked again. Never would anyways. They, I don't trust anyone here if I live in the safest and My doors will remain locked and my windows remain locked at night. Don't trust you. As for the suspect, what he went on to do with his life is anyone's guess. On the evening before Thanksgiving in 2020, Joey Archer, his wife Beth, and their young daughters were asleep in their home in Rainer, Washington, when they were suddenly woken up by the sound of their doorbell ringing ferociously at around 6.30 a.m. Immediately, Joey got up and ran to the front door, thinking it could be a neighbor in need of help. While her husband rushed to greet the stranger, Beth checked their security cameras and noticed that her car was no longer in the driveway. To her horror, she also saw a bearded man she didn't recognize trying to break into Joey's car with a shovel. Shocked at what he saw when he arrived at the front door, Joey decided not to confront the unstable intruder and immediately called the police to report the incident while he helplessly watched the man damage his car with the shovel. While all this was happening, My man's got more pride than I do, boy! My man got more thoughts than I do, I'll be like, what the fuck you doing? Just trying to... 
I'll just confront the guy immediately. Put myself in complete danger. When you think twice on it. Not the smartest move. Happening, Beth ran to their two daughters' bedrooms to let them know that someone was trying to break into their house and told them to jump out the window and run to the family's barn to hide while they figured out what to do. As the girls ran to the barn, Joey noticed the stranger had taken his attention off the car and was now using the shovel to break down their front door. Realizing his life and the safety of his family was now in danger, after the intruder had broken the glass on the door, he yanked the shovel out of his hands at just the right moment and used it to hit him on the head twice before chasing him out into the yard and subduing him while he waited for the cops to arrive. Smart man, I was about to say, you got to get in the family mode, your children's on the thing, and he's trying to break to the house, that's when... That's when you get in defense mode. You don't mess, don't fuck around. Following the incident, the family chose not to identify the man due to safety concerns, but the cops promptly charged him with residential burglary, criminal trespassing, and vehicle prowling. Still confused as to how the man had gotten into their property, the archers reviewed the footage and looked at everything the intruder had done prior to them waking up, including jumping over the fence to get into their driveway. As they soon realized, the man had been on their property for about half an hour before they woke up, rummaging through their garage and backing one of their cars into a ditch. In a Facebook post he made after the incident, Joey described the invasion as every dad's worst nightmare and encouraged other nearby residents to install security cameras for their family's safety. After the nightmare the archers went through, Joey bought a shotgun and a pistol and upgraded his barn's security and surveillance systems to prevent a similar incident from happening again. As for the intruder, it was never confirmed if he was under the influence of something at the time of the invasion. But the fact that he rang the doorbell for several minutes before trying to break into the car and then the house suggests he was likely not in his right mind. It's possible the man was suffering from the effects of a pretty severe mental illness, but because the archers decided to keep the case private, we'll likely never know for sure. This footage was recorded in March 2019 by- I might sound like a dick, but why? Why do you keep it private? The name of the guy who broke into your property. Like what? He's in jail, isn't he? Like he could come back whether he's there or whether you reveal his name or not. It's like, I'm confused what reasons you have to be keep it pro I'm confused why you're protecting the identity of the, why you're not revealing the identity of the guy who broke in. Maybe someone can explain to me why I'm like, oh, that makes more sense. But, like, if you're reasoning, oh, if we don't really, he won't come back, that's not how it works. He, he, he still can. Security cameras in an apartment in the Bronx, New York. The disturbing footage shows an intruder prowling around a baby's nursery, where a two-month-old baby lay sleeping in her crib. Although the suspect doesn't seem to be showing any interest in the sleeping child, it's still pretty disturbing to see him do something so evil and selfish right in front of an innocent baby. After rifling through the baby's bedroom for a couple of minutes, the suspect was scared off by the sound of the baby's 32-year-old father walking around in the living room. But instead of calling it a night, the man then broke into another apartment on a different floor of the same building, which belonged to a 28-year-old woman. This time, his burglary attempt was successful, and he got away with some jewelry, a bicycle, and a backpack. As it was later revealed, the man entered both of the apartments through the unsecured fire exit windows. Even though the man's face can be seen pretty clearly in the footage, and the NYPD put out a Crime Stoppers alert on him, after the man fled the area, he was never seen again. It's possible that he went on to burglarize more homes in the same neighborhood after that night, but we'll likely never know for sure. Hey, gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.